y equals one third absolute value of x plus four minus one. Now, what you want to pay attention to is that the general form, okay, of the absolute value function, okay, the y equals absolute value of x, would be written like this. It would be y equals a times the quantity x minus h, the absolute value of that, plus k. Now, the h and the k are what shift the graph left and right, up and down, okay? The number that's grouped with the x, that's going to shift the graph in the left and right, the x direction, but it has the opposite effect of the sign here. So if this was x minus 2, it would actually be shifting positive 2, so to the right 2. If it was x plus 2, then it would actually be going to the left 2. Okay, so you're with me so far? And then this k value, if it's positive, it's going to go up, and negative is going to go down. So the same as the sign. If it's positive, it's going up, negative is going down. And then this a value here in front, this is what's stretching the graph if it's greater than 1, compressing or shrinking the graph vertically if it's between 0 and 1, and if it's negative, that's going to reflect it over the x-axis. So going back to number one, you can see that this graph is being shifted uh, left four and down one, because see the plus four, that's actually having the opposite effect, left four. So what we're gonna do here is, let's zoom in a little bit on this so we can see a little bit better. Let's see, how about 200%? Okay, let's go down here to this graph. So you can see basically what we're doing is we're shifting left four, two, three, four, down one. We're gonna think of that point right there, okay, as our shifted origin, like our new starting point. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to focus in on the parent function, this part here, y equals one-third absolute value of x. We're going to make a table of values, okay, and we're going to plot from that shifted origin right there. So let's pick some easy values. Let's just say, for example, like uh, negative 6, negative 3, uh, 0, 3, and 6. Okay, so now Absolute value of negative 6 is 6, times 1 third is going to give us positive 2. Absolute value of negative 3 gives us positive 3, times 1 third is 1. 0 is 0, times 1 third is 0. Okay, 3 gives us 1, and 6 gives us 2. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, from this point, we're going to plot these coordinates. So negative 6 comma 2, we're going to go left 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 2, right about there. And negative 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, right about there. Uh, let's see, and if we go right 3, up 1, and 4, 5, 6, up 2, right about there. So now you can see this is our, uh, this is our graph. It's going to go like this, okay, and like this. And see how it has that V-shape uh, to it? So the absolute value graphs, they always have that real sharp, uh, corner, that V-shape, whereas the parabolas, they have that like U-shape to it, that U-shape uh, curve. So this is our graph here. If they're asking you for the domain, this is going to be you know, all real numbers. It's going left and right. If they ask you for the range, you can see that the Y values are going to be uh, greater than or equal to negative 1. So that's the idea. Let's look at another example. So let's maybe cruise on down to, uh, let's just say like, for example, number 4 over here. Okay, so 4, we can see that we're working with a square root function now, right? So what do you think on this one? What, what do you think the 3 does to the graph? Okay, well, if you said left 3, you're right, because this has the opposite effect. And then what about the minus 1? Okay, the minus 1 is just down, right? So this is going to basically be going left 3. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, down 1. So right about there, we're going to think of that as our starting point. Okay, and then now what we're going to do is we're just going to focus in on what's left. Okay, this is what's called our parent function. Okay, y equals negative 2 square root of x. We're going to make a t-chart, okay, a little table like so. And we're going to pick values that are easy to take the square root of. For example, 0, 1, 4, and 9, right? Okay, so the square root of 0 is 0 times negative 2 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Uh, square root of 4 is 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And square root of 9 is 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Now, notice that the 2, what the 2 is doing is it's actually stretching the graph vertically, okay? And then the negative is actually reflecting it over the x-axis. So let's see what that looks like. We plot from this point here. So 0, 0, that's right here. Uh, let's see, 1, negative 2, that's right here. Uh, 4, negative 4, that's going to be, let's see, right about 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, right about there. Okay, and so on. And you can see what's happening with this graph. Here, let me go, do one more. So this will be, let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right about there. Okay, so you can see this graph looks something like this. 
Okay, and just remember when you're graphing a y equals square root of x, it has this shape originally, right? The 2 is stretching it, so it's going up like multiplied by 2, all the y values. And then what the negative here is doing is it's reflecting it, so now it's looking something like this, right? And then now the uh, positive 3 and the negative 1 is actually taking this graph here and shifting it left 3 and down 1. And that's how we're getting the graph that you see on, on the coordinate axis uh, right there. So let's go take a look at another example, a different type of graph this time. Let's see what else we have in here. Uh, let's see, how about, uh, how about this one, number 5? This is a little bit different. Uh, so this is y equals 5, absolute value of x minus, I'm sorry, not the absolute value, y equals 5 divided by the quantity x minus 2 plus 1. So here you can see what is the negative 2 doing to the graph and what's the 1 doing to the graph? Okay, what do you think on that one? So if you said it's shifting right 2, you're right and up one, you're right, okay, so that's going to be like our starting point, and it's good to know what the parent graphs look like, so if you want to graph y equals a over x, and let's just say that a is positive, okay, then the, the graph's going to look something like this, it's going to be a hyperbola, and the two branches of the graph are going to be in the first and third quadrants, okay, of course the five here is going to stretch it by five, it's going to multiply the y values by five, and then we're shifting it right to and up one, but what we're going to do now is we're just going to focus on the y equals 5 over x part, we've already taken the shift into account, so we're just going to make a table on what's left over here, okay? So let's uh, plot some easy numbers. How about, for example, like negative 5, negative 1, positive 1, and positive 5. So let's see, so 5 divided by negative 5 is giving us negative 1. 5 over negative 1 is negative 5. 5 divided by 1 is positive 5, and 5 divided by 5 is 1. And now we're going to plot these coordinates from here. Now, important thing to recognize is that with this reciprocal function, that the graph's getting closer and closer to the x and y axis. So those are the asymptotes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw in our asymptotes. And notice that our asymptotes also shifted to the right 2 and up 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Plot those in there. Okay, draw that in there like so. Okay, so then from this point, we're going to go left 5. So let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 1. So right about there. Uh, let's see, left 1, uh, down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right about there. So you can see this branch of the graph is looking something like this. Okay, a little bit more smooth. Okay, and then from this point, we're also going to go right 1 and up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, and also write 5 up 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1, right about there. And the graph gets closer and closer to those asymptotes, but it doesn't touch, doesn't cross. So are you starting to see the, the pattern here? So what you're doing is you're looking for that number that's a group of the x, okay, and that's going to shift the graph in the x direction, opposite from the sign. Then you're going to look at the other value that's added or subtracted, adding is going to shift up, subtracting is going to shift down, then you take whatever's left, and you make a table and you plot from that shifted starting point, that shifted origin. So there's a lot more different uh, examples on this worksheet. Uh, I think there's 12 in total. And I've, like I said, I've got the answer key. So if you want additional practice, go ahead and uh, get that worksheet from my uh, Teachers Pay Teacher store. I'll have the link down there. Otherwise, let me know what you thought of this video. Just a little bit different format from my normal whiteboard videos. Still my same goal for you to help you, you know, boost your score in your math class, you know, make learning math a lot less stressful and uh, you know, help you to uh, really excel with your math. So let me know in the comments if uh, this video is helpful or if you prefer my whiteboard videos or if you can give me some uh, constructive feedback, I appreciate it. But again, I uh, hope this helped you and I look forward to seeing you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.